Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Tara and I'm a physical therapist who specializes in pelvic health. So today I'm going to give you my opinion on the question, should everyone Kegel? So let's start with what a Kegel actually is. So a Kegel is when we are contracting our pelvic floor muscles and working on strengthening our pelvic floor. If you have no idea what the pelvic floor is, I do have a video where I go over what the pelvic floor muscles are and I'll link that down below for you guys. I'm kind of going to give you my opinion on Kegeling if you are having some type of pelvic symptoms, pain, um, bladder or bowel symptoms, and then I'm going to give you my opinion on Kegeling if you have no symptoms and you're just doing it to strengthen. So let's start with someone who is having some type of pelvic floor symptom because I think there's a common misconception out there that if you're having a pelvic problem, then Kegels can kind of fix everything. I kind of think where this comes from is that say we are having an issue in the pelvic region and we're like, we don't know what to do. The only thing we can think of that we can do for the pelvic region is Kegel, so we kind of jump to that, but it's much more complicated than that. So let's start with pelvic pain because I think that'll be a quick explanation. So most of the time with pelvic pain, the muscles in the pelvic region are actually short and tight. So if we start Kegeling, which is contracting the muscles, when we contract a muscle, we are shortening that muscle. Then we are kind of could be feeding into the problem at hand. Most of the time in the cases of pelvic pain, we actually need to learn how to relax these muscles before we move on to strengthening and Kegeling. Okay, so let's move on to urinary leakage because I think most people think, okay, if I'm leaking urine, then I definitely need to Kegel. But keep in mind, there are many different types of urinary incontinence, which we're not going to go in detail in this video, but depending what type of leakage you're having, the muscles actually might be too tight as opposed to too weak. Okay, it is possible. It is also possible that you could have a muscle that is tight and weak at the same time. When a muscle is tight and weak, the first thing that we actually have to do is teach that muscle to relax and then we move on to strengthening. So I know it kind of sounds weird that a muscle could be tight and weak at the same time, but it can happen. And I'm going to explain it to you with a different muscle in the body because I know our pelvic floor is kind of hard to visualize and um, understand what's going on. So if you think about your bicep muscle, so that's the muscle right here. Say your bicep muscle was super, super tight. What would happen is, when you're, if your bicep muscle had its normal range, you could straighten your elbow. If this was really, really tight and short, what would happen is your elbow would be stuck in a bent position, okay? So say it was really tight and your elbow is stuck here. If I wanted to contract my bicep and pull something in by bending my elbow, okay, so I'm stuck here, that's all I have, so let me pull, so I'm gonna pull from here. Okay, wouldn't I be stronger if I could start to straighten my elbow and pull through more of a range than if I'm just at the end range here? Does that kind of make sense? So I'm stuck here, I can only pull this much. If I loosened up my bicep first, now I can pull through the full range. So that's kind of like the pelvic floor. So if it's short and tight, then you're really only kegeling through a small range. If you could fully relax the muscle, now you can do a full Kegel and you actually will have more strength in your pelvic floor. So that's why the first stage is get it to lengthen, okay? Make it so it's not so tight and then you start to strengthen. So I know you may be thinking, how am I supposed to know if the muscles are tight, weak, or both tight and weak? Really, a pelvic floor physical therapist can examine those muscles and tell you what is going on. Now let's say, okay, you have no tightness in the pelvic floor muscles and it's really just weak, which does happen, of course. There are people who just have weakness and no tightness. But are you actually Kegeling correctly? A lot of times people think that they're Kegeling correctly and they're actually doing the opposite motion. So when we Kegel, the muscles are shortening and pulling up and in. When we relax, they come back to a neutral state. When we bear down, we actually lengthen the muscles more, okay? So I have seen through my clinical practice that I've had patients come in that have been maybe Kegeling on their own, trying to fix their issue, and they do only have weakness, but then when I examine them, they're actually not Kegeling correctly. Instead of contracting the muscle, they're actually doing the opposite and bearing down, which is why they never got better, okay? So again, 
a pelvic floor physical therapist can examine you and tell you if you are actually doing the contraction correctly. Okay, so let's end with someone who say has no symptoms at all. No bowel symptoms, no bladder symptoms, no pelvic pain. Then yes, most likely Kegeling can keep your pelvic floor muscles healthy. My biggest suggestion is to make sure that when you do your Kegels that you contract and fully relax after each one. So you're not just contracting in this shortened state. So you Kegel, fully relax, okay, before moving on to your next Kegel. Working through this full range and doing the Kegels correctly can keep your pelvic muscles healthy, can keep the pelvic floor region healthy. So the pelvic floor muscles, we do want them to be able to be strong because they are what helps keep us continent so we're not having urine leakage or bowel leakage and they also keep everything supported so they're keeping our bladder if you're a woman your uterus and the rectum all supported and in place okay so it is important to have the muscles strong I don't want from this video for you to think that we never want to strengthen them I just kind of wanted to show you a different perspective and show you that Maybe if you are having symptoms that there's other things that you might need to do as opposed to just Kegeling or maybe there's a step that you need to do before you start to Kegel. So that's all for today's video. If you guys have any suggestions, questions that you'd like me to make a video on related to the pelvic floor, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I really do love sharing this information with you guys because sometimes I think it's not talked about enough and that we need to really be aware of our bodies and the pelvic floor is part of our body and we need to have a basic understanding of it. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.